Whether we are there or not, ITSP Magazine still gets the best stories. Plenty of conferences and events spark our curiosity and allow us to start conversations with some of the world's brightest minds. In person or virtually, Sean Martin and Marco Cipelli go on location and sit down with them at the intersection of technology, cybersecurity, and society. Together, we discover what the synergy of these three elements means for the future of humanity. All right, here we are. You're very welcome to a new brand story here on ITSP Magazine where we get to cover all kinds of cool topics and new findings and new launches here at, I'll say Black Hat, because we are Black Hat. And uh, yeah, I'm thrilled to have Mark Lambert on from Arbor Code. Mark, thanks for joining me. Yeah, thank you very much. Pleasure. So it's, a, it's always a good time, and it's a lot of stuff going on. Yeah. A lot yeah. of stuff going on. And I want to, maybe for folks who the small number that aren't familiar with Armor Code. Hmm. <laughs> yeah. Maybe kind of the the elevated pitch of what you do and sure. who you do it for. Yeah, yeah. So so we're in the application security and vulnerability management space, but we're not a scanner. Uh, there are literally hundreds of scanners out there and more and more you know, vendors entering the market every day. Um, and that's the challenge that we focus on solving. So what we do is we connect into an organization's existing tool ecosystem, ingest that data into our platform, we normalize it for visibility, we prioritize it with contextual risk scoring, and then we enable organizations to automate their remediation workflows downstream. So the Armour Code application security posture management platform provides all of these core capabilities across use cases such as application security, vulnerability management, risk-based vulnerability management is a term that many organizations understand, um, and then also software supply chain as well. Okay. So how how broad is vulnerability can be a broad topic yep. as well. How broad does Armor Code go? with respect to that Great, point. great question. So um, we actually ingest data from over 250 different source tools. That's everything from threat modeling all the way through the application security stack, which is obviously software composition analysis, static application security testing, DAST, penetration testing, all the way through cloud, container, infrastructure, traditional vulnerability managements like a Tenable or a Qualys, even all the way to endpoint. Uh, we bring all of that data, we integrate with threat uh, intel feed, we have our own threat intel feed as well as implement, integrating with open source such as CISA Care, bringing in EPSS data, as well as integrating with commercial feeds like uh, Mandian or, or VolDB as well. Um, so you, the, you, you asked me kind of like, what's the breadth? You know, right. it's pretty broad. <laughs> um, and it's not just CVEs. So when people think of vulnerabilities, they right, normally the default thing. to a CVE. Um, you know, that's obviously a published vulnerability. We can leverage threat intelligence there to further do additional risk scoring of that, of that context. Um, we also also support um you know, vulnerabilities that are found through red teaming or pen testing or bug bounty programs, as well as ingesting of weaknesses. So once we've kind of gone from our reactive mode of reacting to a vulnerability that's been discovered, we can actually correlate that data to the actual underlying weakness, and then organizations can start being proactive with their software security programs and focusing on kind of like um, the most prevalent weaknesses that they need to address within their organization. So in terms of getting visibility, uh, so all those sources, um, the breadth up and down for the, the content that you're collecting and ingesting and, and I presume pre painting a picture of what yep. that looks like. To me, that's one side of the coin. The other is, what does the business mm -hmm. look like? So 100%. What, what's the environment? Mm -hmm. What sector are they in? What tech, kind of with your threat intelligence? So, that other side of the coin, how how do you work with that? Yeah, so so really when we talk about risk and understanding the risk associated with a finding, it could be a vulnerability or a weakness, um, there's a context that goes along with that, which is your business context. So when we talk about risk scoring, there's the technical risk of the thing that's found, and then the contextual risk or the business impact or the business importance of where it is found. Those two things come together to give us our risk scoring that we can then use to understand our, our posture across our organization, but then also prioritize tasks as well. So we're not doing a fire drill on every system with the next log4j jobs, for example. We're focused on our business critical assets, 
and then maybe like the backend data sciences application that's not externally facing, it's a non your business critical component that can you know wait 24 hours or 48 hours rather than all of the front end web apps that we're running our core businesses that need to be escalated. Right. I presume, I don't want to assume, but mm -hmm. I presume you are looking at commercial apps, bespoke apps, uh, yeah. yeah, apps that are built, built together, pulled together with APIs and whatever else, right? I'm thinking of things like Zapier and, mm -hmm. and whatever where somebody's building in yep. a, a, a no code application basically using other pieces. Um, how do you how do you help organizations not just prioritize mm -hmm. where they're exposed and how yeah how that might impact their business? But there's a lot of teams. Yeah. Even even just that last example, it might be somebody in marketing building a, yeah. a, an automation mm -hmm. workflow, right? <laughs> yeah. It's using stuff. So how do you then work with the business and mm -hmm. more specifically the IT ops and the security ops and the app dev and the dev ops and to orchestrate Yes. All of that. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I think you touched upon a, like, a key challenge. So the first problem is visibility, right? Mm -hmm. Being able to get an understanding of what exists in my ecosystem. And we do that by connecting to sources of information. The vulnerability scanners, you know, the, 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 t the scanners, the tools themselves, provide one set of inventory information. Mm -hmm. You can also connect to um, CMDBs. We can connect to things like your code repositories, identify where code exists there. Start build out a very large map of what exists in the organization, and then you just start to operationalize that by tying that back to the teams, giving the teams visibility and engaging them in the conversations. So what normally happens with an organization is we'll connect to the sources of truth, right, the, the, where the data is, where the inventories are. Uh, we'll bring all of that data together into the platform, start applying the risk scoring, and identifying the things that need to be prioritized, and then it gets handed over for remediation to the development teams. And often, this is where you start getting more engagement with the development teams through things like integrations with Jira, for example, right. and that further refines the process and increases the escalation. And we're very fortunate at Armaco to be working with a fantastic community um, of enterprise class organizations. I mean, this is an enterprise problem, not an individual right. team right. problem. Um, and that's what drives up our volume of data that we've been working on. So we, call, we often talk about the three Vs, and these are the things that lay the foundation for our AI functionality. Uh, volume, we've processed over 10 billion findings now within the platform. Uh, variety, this mm -hmm. is where we integrate with over 250 different source tools, again, from threat modeling all the way through. Um, and then validation, over 2,000 security professionals leveraging the platform to support over 75,000 developers. So those three things together really help us uh, or has helped us build a platform that helps organizations deploy at enterprise scale and then further drive kind of like the advancements in the technology that we've been doing with the introduction of our AI capabilities. Yeah. So what I hear in there is teams not only find value in what you do, mm -hmm. but they're not pulling their hair out and losing sleep because you're there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, the whole point is to, to streamline that interaction, right? right? So you know, we often see that you know, organizations, you know, the, to, to address the challenge of the rising number of vulnerabilities, we just deploy another scanner. Right. Um, and then the trouble is that's just more data. Mm -hmm. And now it's more data in a siloed system. And it ultimately ends up with lots of contextual switching, lots of um, kind of like friction between the security team and development and also actually inside of the security team with the application security and the vulnerability management because you'll have to get on the same page. Um, so if we're able to bring that together, streamline the interactions, optimize triaging workflows as well as the, uh, the remediation workflows, then ultimately we're driving towards you know, uh, shorter SLAs, reducing MTTR, and sure, I mean, time to remediation, making sure that our organizations are able to deliver in accordance with their internal mandates. So what are some of the outcomes? I, I think anybody listening and Clearly, you and I can see that if you have better visibility, better context, better connection to the business and the impact it might have, you can finally tune and, and run mm -hmm. a program that's more efficient, more effective, and, yeah. and hopefully broader, broader uh, coverage as well. The other side of that, though, mm -hmm. is the benefit to the team, mm -hmm. the 
benefit to the program, benefit to the business. Um, any nuggets you can share on how customers kind of speak to the yeah. value that they get beyond just a mean time to yeah, detect maybe. and respond. Yeah. yeah, I mean, that usually is one of the biggest key areas, right? Yeah. So, you know, um, it's not just the, the mean time to respond, though. It's also kind of like um, there's insecurity. We have this uh, zero tolerance, right? It's like, hey, we have to fix everything. Right. Um, so, but as we know, the volume of findings and vulnerabilities is just growing exponentially, so we're never gonna fix it all. But if we can burn down our debt, if we can proactively identify areas of opportunity for us to protect the business, we're fundamentally reducing our organizational risk. Now, that's a, that's a soft benefit. It's difficult to quantify that, um, but being able to demonstrate that progress, demonstrate the ability to, that you're burning through your backlog and that you have optimizations in place and a lot of those optimizations are driven through the capabilities such as you know, AI correlation and AI remediation within the platform to streamline that. So this is a question I ask often but only when I feel that the conversation lends itself well to it and I think this one does. Mm -hmm. I have a personal belief based on experience of stuff that I've done over decades that security with the right information and the right mindset can actually change the business to reduce the impact the business has on security, if that makes sense. The example might be, we have these five systems that we're running, Yep. and they all, every month they have five new patches, or 10 new patches, I don't know, whatever the number is, and we're just spending a ton of time over and over and over. If we could just change that system, or if it might be a workflow or a business process or application or whatever, if we can change that, we're gonna reduce the number of findings, reduce the exposure, reduce the time to the response because we're gonna eliminate it because mm -hmm. we're not, we don't have this vulnerable application or system in place anymore. So your thoughts, well, do you believe that that's possible? <laughs> and, and if so, have you experienced anything with customers that might lead See that so, so I, I think it is. Um, I think it's a goal. Okay. okay. So um, there are a number of things that need to be in place for us to be able to really kind of like respond in a, in almost a fully automated way. So I mean, the the first thing I would say is you are, we touched upon this a moment ago, right? Is the business setting the priorities from the point of view of hey, this is these are my crown jewels, and I see that in you know most enterprise class organizations, especially those in the financial services sector, they will have their set of crown jewels. These are the high value targets that we have to protect at all costs. We're going to define our SLAs there, but everything else we're going to like let you guys figure it out and do it in your own in your own time frame. That's one of the ways that business can help security without kind of like getting in in, in, in the way, if you like. Right. Um, one of the things ultimately that a lot of people talk to me about is can you do fully automated remediation? Mm -hmm. So can I just let the machine self-heal itself? Um, and, and there's a really, you know, the short answer to that question is yes, if <laughs> you had a fully functional validation, which nobody has. Okay. But what you can do is you can optimize the process to the point where the human's involved. So, you know, one of the things, for example, is like automated, you know, injection of, uh, you know, fixes to code, uh, which are application security centric. Not something we do at Alma Code, but something that our partners do, like a mob security, for example. Um, you know, however, that code still needs to be reviewed by a human being. But if you can get it ultimately to the end, that review time is, is less. Okay. Maybe, maybe this is probably more connected to some of the stuff that you've recently released mm -hmm. uh, in your platform. So maybe. You yeah, can highlight some of that work. Sure, now. sure. So I, I touched upon the three V's, right? Uh, volume, variety, and validation. And that, you know, we're, as I said, we're very fortunate at Armacode. We've been working with some amazing enterprise class organizations, which has really kind of like set us up to have a great community. We're identifying real uses of AI that can be used to remove those bottlenecks in the process. So actually, at RSA this year, we released our AI correlation, which gives us the ability to correlate findings across tools using data fusion. Um, we've done crustal correlation in the industry for decades. You know, basically take an attribute, find the same attribute across right. the different tools. The problem, though, is if you are trying to cross a different scan type, so again, the variety, mm -hmm. um, it's very difficult to correlate something like a DAST finding with a SAST finding. So, you know, dynamic testing and static testing. It's difficult to correlate runtime container with the underlying software composition analysis data. What AI has done is it's unlocked the ability for us to understand the context of a finding 
and start to do classification and labeling so that we can actually start to bridge that information together. Right. Um, so that's what we released at RSA. What we're releasing here at Black Hat is our AI remediation um, at a level above the individual scanner, really helping organizations with a strategy for how to address not just this issue, but the other issues that are related to them as well. So, you know, a lot of times we talk about automated remediation, it's very tactical, it's hey, give me the line of code that updates this thing. Um, and, you know, we give some of that information our remediation guidance as well, but we're going beyond that to say, how can I prevent the impact of something similar to this in the future? So what's mm. my priority two, three, and four strategies rather than just update a library? So it's a little right. bit kind of like reducing the risk of the whack, you know, playing whack-a-mole with right. the next, you know, log4j or what have you. Yeah, and I, I suspect if some of your multiple really smart people sat down, they might be able to do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But it would take a heck of a long time. And, and, and resources are constrained. Yeah. The, the, the findings are piling up. So leveraging technology to, to do that is great. How, how involved does a human get mm -hmm. um, both on your side and customer side in this new world? Well, you know, what's really interesting is that, you know, when, when, when AI first came on the scene, on, on, this le on the most recent wave that we're having, um, you know, everybody's like, well, okay, you know, chat, um, you know, uh, GPT is gonna take my job, right? Well, it's not. Anybody that's used it knows that you have to, it's a tool, right. and it's a tool that's gonna make you more effective. It's also a tool that can elevate uh, members of the team that maybe aren't as skilled. Um, and really, you know, the way I view the capabilities we've introduced inside of Armour Code, it really is like a, a security assistant or a, a virtual security security champion, you know, elevating and identifying kind of like, hey, this finding is correlated with these other ones. Rather than you having to sift through all the data, it's giving you kind of like the needles in the haystack rather than the whole haystack. The remediation is like, rather than having to do Google searches or building, mm -hmm. you're know, going through trainings as to how to do a you know, remediation strategy, it's right there in the platform and it's generated based on an LLM that's contextually trained upon what these vulnerabilities and weaknesses are, what the best practices are, um, and then that gives you a, a tool that ultimately, if you're an expert, reduces your time, and if you're you're not an expert, but part of the team, you're able to start elevating. I love that term, virtual security champion. Yeah. That's really cool, that's really cool. Well, Mark, it's been a pleasure chatting with you. I don't know, is there anything else that we didn't touch on that you want to highlight? I, you know what? I think I, there was some, some findings uh, as well. Yeah, I mean, I, I think the, the the one thing that I'll I'll kind of like highlight is you know the, the adoption of the AI capabilities have been you know significant within the customer base. We actually have uh, over ninety percent adoption of the correlation functionality. Over six models have been now been deployed, correlating different types of things. I think we're really at the point now with AI that we're beginning to see real world business benefits. Mm. We're kind of beyond the hype phase, at least I hope so, right. um, and we're getting into that phase where we're actually able to leverage it for meaningful uh, outcomes. Right. Ninety percent. That's impressive. It's yeah. impressive. Well, Mark, thanks very much for uh, taking this time and uh, sharing this Code Armor story with us. Yeah. And uh, best of luck to you at the show. Uh, if you're listening to this while you're at Black Hat, be sure to visit uh, Mark and team down at the Code Armor yep. uh, booth. Uh, and if not, connect with Mark and team on LinkedIn. We'll, we'll of course include links to. Uh, to connect with them on LinkedIn and uh, on their website. And I know you have some campaigns running as well. So yes, we'll share all that stuff too. So thanks everybody. Thanks, Mark. Great. Thank you very much. Looking forward to the next time. We hope you enjoyed this episode of Sean and Marco's On Location event coverage conversations. Please take a moment to give the show a good rating and leave a comment. Remember to share this podcast with your friends, family, and colleagues. Come back for more conversations and follow Sean Martin and Marco Cipelli as they continue their journey toward redefining cybersecurity and society.